talking over the open credits because I can. How's it going everybody? This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another episode of Bust a Recap. And it's good to have it's good to be back, you guys. It's good to have you guys back. Um honestly, it's just it's it's good to be back. I gotta say, it's good to be back on this show. Because um, this is actually one of my favorite shows to do. As I said, I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer. See, it says so right there because I, I put together new title cards for everything. And for those of you guys that don't know, this is the show where we talk about spoilers of stuff that we're watching on Netflix and various other streaming services. Just in case you guys haven't gotten around to it. Why are we so far behind? Because we do stuff episode by episode for you. And of course, with me today is my good friend and compatriot. Hey everybody, how you doing? <laughs> it's License Hench here. That's right. License to Hench. There yeah. we go. So yeah, yeah, new title cards, new new stuff. Mm -hmm. I figure after the dragon attack, I had to make sure that everything was going down properly and getting the angles and all that stuff right. But it's a thing. It's it's a real thing. So, um, how you doing, man? How uh, you've been gone for a few weeks? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm doing better now. I uh, I was down for the holidays, and then I guess over the holiday break, I picked up the uh, that nasty cough that's been going around. So I pretty much spent about a week and a half just you know hacking and wheezing. So uh, feeling a lot better now, but I may occasionally cough on air. I apologize for anyone whose eardrums are blue. I'll try to turn away from the microphone. You're fired. You're fired. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. You're going to show up here just getting over sickness. You're supposed to be over the sickness. You're not supposed to be here coughing into my mic and infecting yeah. anybody else that comes down here. Well, I was, I was actually laughing because it seems like I've been getting about 50% better each day. Well, if I only get half better each day, that means I'll never get 100% better. This thing just lingers. Oh, so you're mathing. No, yeah. no. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's raining. That, oh, that's the thing. No, it's raining in Southern California. No, it's the apocalypse because water is falling from the sky and everyone <laughs> is losing their freaking minds. I kid you not, three times a day I've got flash flood warnings like announcing on my phone like it was the end of the world. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Yep. <laughs> it just means it's going to rain in L.A. Like flash flood, yes, there might be water in the streets. Well, that's the thing, though. It, yeah. it, it is the end of the world yeah. for Angelinos because... We don't have the infrastructure to save us from water. <laughs> we really, we're not used to it. Like, I, people forget that LA, like the greater Los Angeles area, which is 75 miles in every direction of Los Angeles. That's no exaggeration. The size of um, some states. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because um, I tell my friends from the East Coast, um, you guys have the luxury of building up. We're on a fault. And we got nothing. Well, we've got miles and miles of miles and miles. So as more people came in to this part of the state, we couldn't build up. We might fall over because the ground might decide otherwise. Mm -hmm. So we just kept going further and further and further out. But the other part that people forget is that this is a desert. It's not Arizona. There aren't cow skulls in the middle of in, in the middle of the wilderness. Not that I'm saying there are in Arizona. But, um, yeah, there they're, they're, they're really are. Um, but they're put there by people who own the property. That's the whole thing. So, you know, but we are in the desert, which means we don't get that much rain. But yeah. this is the time of the year where we get our rain, yep. all of it, at once. It might not stop raining for, like, a month, you know? Yep. I mean, yep. we, we kind of, I'm not going to say we turn into Seattle because that's crazy. Seattle, like, they... What we get in rain, they get in sun. I feel so bad for those guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, five hours a day, they're like, ah, 
oh my god, oh my god, my family's pasty. And then the clouds come back, <laughs> and uh, and everything goes back to normal. Yeah, so. I, I would be more interested in moving in the Pacific Northwest, except, like I said, I get a little funky if I don't get enough sunlight. So uh, I was always very aware that if I move up north, I'm going to have to get one of, one of those uh, uh, light uh, treatment things that make sure you get a certain amount of sunlight every day. Otherwise, you know, you get gloomy. Well, you're lactose intolerant, so it's not like you can take a lot of uh, vitamin B. But I also, wow, this is this is a serious thing, man. That is kind of mm -hmm. cool. Wow. Um, well, honestly, I am saying hello, hello, and hello to you. Hello to me. Like, hello to you. Hello. Hello to me. And hello to you. Thank you for showing up because, um, honestly, we do this for you guys. Um, I've been doing a whole lot to get... The Patreon stocked up with, um, excuse me. Oh God, now I'm fired. Great. You got me sick. You got me sick. And now I'm just, I'm just hateful. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot to get the Patreon, um, archive up and going. And I loaded like 18 videos for free up on our Patreon. Um, but I'll talk about that in a minute. First, I want to say hello, hello to our good friends in NP city. What's up guys? Hey, oh wow, people are already giving us cheers. You can move that chair out of the way, because, you know, I mean, you can get up. The camera's on me. Actually, the camera's on NP City. So, yeah, you can totally, yeah, there you go. Now you can see all of our lovely face mates. And, um, but yeah, I mean, seriously, 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 um, we've been doing a lot of stuff that's going down. Like I said, um, you know, we're talking about this stuff today we're talking about our week because that's what we do we talk about our weeks we talk about that stuff but i'm trying to be a little more regimented just a little a little bit more regimented and um the ways that i'm running this place so it's i would say i pay the cost to be the boss but yeah if that were the case i would have had this place like better a long time ago <laughs> however um you know we've got a lot of stuff going but I'm putting this out there to you guys. If you guys want to join us or talk to us about any of the stuff we're talking about, feel free to do so at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K. I'm getting so better at that, at gmail.com. Um, check out our old archive over on YouTube. That's where I'm going to be putting up like our quick video logs and all that stuff when I go, you know, I was thinking about this. And then you guys get to tell me that I'm the genius that I am and I'm so well thought out and my arguments are perfectly logical in the comment section on YouTube because that's what it's for, right? Or you can follow us over on Twitter at Back in the Deck. That's um, at sign. I like I, I like saying ampersand, but that's not what that symbol is. Uh, and that's at Back in the Deck. That's at B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K. Um, and feel free. Actually, I'm just asking, please, join our Facebook group, Deckers on the Book. We got a lot, a lot more people joining from a lot of different other streams. Um, we're putting together an archive of, um, of the streams that a lot of good people do about gaming and comics and all the nerd culture stuff that's doing a lot of women, LGBT, a lot of the differently abled. We're doing the thing. So head on over to Deckers on the Book and join that. But if you're like me and you spend a lot of time driving in the rain or in the sleet or in the dark, um, you shouldn't be watching this right now. You should be watching the road. And since you should be watching the road, you can totally put us on right now and just don't look at what we're doing. But let's face it, we're just too attractive for you guys not to do that. So you can um, listen to us over on SoundCloud. Hey, you guys on SoundCloud? Yeah, that's the whole thing. Um, and that's at SoundCloud slash BID underscore P. And follow us on the Instagram. That's at Back in the Deck. I'm sure you're sensing a theme here. Now, um, as I said, we're doing a whole lot of different things. Um, if you guys want to help us out to do some stuff to keep the lights on, that would be awesome. What we have is a GoFundMe. <laughs> um, GoFundMe up. And um, it's at six, well, we've got 475 of $600, but I have to change the goal on that just to make sure that we can pay for our equipment properly. And if you go, but you know what? You guys seem like you're doing all right right now. How can I help you guys out in the future in case you guys need my help as a decker in the future? I'm glad you asked because you can head on over to the Patreon. That's, yep, I told you I was going to be talking about that. And we got.
got a bunch of stuff up there on the Patreon. We've got, um, let's see here. Yep, we've got our episodes of Game Gallery and um, more Game Gallery and a whole bunch of stuff from the archives. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can totally help us out. Um, and of course, there are tiers, so you get swag like the stuff that we make. And of course, you know, matter of fact, let's go see what's going on on Deckers on the Book. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's our Facebook group. It's me telling you guys about today's thing. And boom, a whole lot of archive stuff. Um, so that's what we got going over there. So like I said, if you guys want to help us out on that, that's cool. I'm still working on the merchandise store. So as soon as we get the merch store up, I will send you guys links to that. All right. So with that, I'm going to say, wow, our music is doing the thing. So yeah, so thank you guys very much on that. And yes, I'm going to be doing this at the end too. Um, I totally forgot how to get my real-time clips going, mm. which means I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be doing more of, um, more editing of course so that i can get some of the better parts of our shows or some of our funny jokes or deep topics mm -hmm. up on up on the youtube as like five minute clips or 10 minute clips just so that the deckers out there that don't know their deckers yet can actually find us so that would be kind of cool but um so while you had your sickness i know you finished one television show mm -hmm. and you went on with your next episode of the assignment which was cloak and dagger yes. marvel's cloak, cloak and, and dagger. dagger now we're at what episode six right i think so oh, uh, check your notes uh, <laughs> um, well that was my problem was because i watched it last night i didn't i didn't take notes because ah. i was still feeling a little a little logy um but uh it's, yeah, it's the episode right after uh, she learns how to use her powers because they have they finally meet, they finally talk, they fight. She talks about being suicidal. He gets angry at her and says, well, just do it then. And she does. And that's when she discovers how to control her powers. OK, so then also she sees her uh, the one good guy in her mom's life get a, his head literally blown off and all of the evidence burned. So she breaks into his office and steals the evidence from the safe that the assassin didn't know he had because, you know, having a blade of light that can cut through anything, it makes uh, and she's already a thief. That just makes that's just enabling her <laughs> that to steal. That makes the job a lot easier. A lot I can easier. tell you that. So she steals all she, she steals all of his paperwork and begins to do the um, serial killer wall floor, wall thing laid out in the floor of her, her church that she's squatting. Oh, no. Yeah, this one actually opens yeah. up with her doing the investigation. Yeah, so she's oh, laying yeah, out the so paper. So we're on episode five. Yeah. Which she's laying out the stuff. She's laying out the stuff on the floor and she she uh, meets up with Ty and is like, yeah, there's, uh, there's holes in it that, yep. like, yes. she can tell there's, like, all of these weird conspiracies going on in the company, but there's a hole as to how they link up. She's like, there's this central thing that is the, is the c common factor on all of this stuff, but she hasn't can't figure out what it is because she actually crashes. She actually meets up with him at school, and he's like, "Why are you here?" Uh, and she's like, "I need to use your computer. You have like a computer and a printer." And he's like, "Couldn't you just go to the coffee shop? You're closer." <laughs> so he helps, and it's like, "Girl, just go to Starbucks." Damn. Yeah. All, although, like, she kind of blends. There are libraries yeah. out there, you know. Yeah, but she'd rather she'd rather mess with him apparently. So uh, he he takes her to the, to the school library and she prints out. She looks up stuff and prints out. But the real reason why she's there shows up is she's talking to him about how she can now use her powers. Mm -hmm. She shows the knife. He's like, "Put that away." Yeah, we got the clip going up, and she's He's like, "Is it the whole actually, school?" Actually, hang on a minute. Yep. Because we fixed a feature. So, what do we got? I controlled it. I made it happen. Check it. Oh, man, hey, Padme. Oh. And he's like, look at that. He's like, what the hell? It's the whole high school. Put that away. Yeah, it's like, hello, you got a, yeah, sitting up going, hello, you got a weapon at my school. Don't you see that my black butt will be killed? <laughs> yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, he, re he reacts rationally of stuff that she's like, look, I can, and she's just so excited she can do it. Well, and then they have the conversation of, you know, how our powers work, how you see fear and I see hope. She goes, well, what if we, 
what if we just start using that to gather information? And he's like, uh, isn't that wrong? Isn't that like you're rummaging around in people's heads and stealing their thoughts? And yeah, she, right, wrong. There's really no law against telepathy and soul searching. <laughs> and because I, I, I do cry. I do like the fact that he's he is like the 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 voice of, uh, you know, right and wrong. And she's like, screw like something drops the line, something like the world has stolen from me all my life. So I think it's only fair. I like maybe I have this power so, he, so I can start stealing back. And then she also, when he asks, like, how did you learn to control your power? She goes, it was a horrific, scary thing. And I never want to do it again. But basically, I almost died. And he's like, what? Because she's like, you should try it. And he's like, what? <laughs> what is your... Yeah, just go ahead and kill yourself. Yeah. What? Kill yourself, but not. Yeah. But yeah, kill yourself. And then this episode focuses on the big game. Because they're actually going to go for state finals. And he is... Uh, his 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 uh, basketball buddies are happy because they're going to the finals because that's part of the reason why they lost. Buddies, him. yeah. You talk like we didn't cover episode two where they beat the crap out yeah. of them and locked him in a cage. Well, they actually they they're actually all nice and happy because they're going to finals and they're like, "You're doing really good." And he, and he just looks at him kind of blank face and goes, "I guess that time in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, <laughs> in the cage in the equipment cage." did me some good after all. And the guy's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, let's take a look. You killed it in practice, man. That jump shot, epic. Well, maybe that extra time in the equipment room helped. You've been first rate ever since, so it sure didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or that look he gives him like, like, like <laughs> yeah, did you just, just say that? Yeah, okay. He's like sitting up and yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. Just oh, yeah. Going, now you're now well, you're my friend. I guess friends. it didn't hurt, you know. Yeah. And it's like, you know that that yeah, that whole situation was real crappy though, because like, the coach pretty much not told told the kids to do that. Yeah, that's exactly the yeah. thing. But yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, he's just sitting up there and he's just like, mother, if I could, I man. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and that that's that's a serious thing like that bears discussion because yeah. it's like, you know, well, we did something terribly wrong to you, but it yielded results that helps everybody out. So and again, um, that thing he does right after where it's like, you know, yeah, give me the pound. You know, are we good, homie? Are we no, good? no, we're, we're good? not good. And it's like, yeah, yeah I, you know I, what? Now, I will um, remember that moment for the rest of my life. <laughs> you steaming douche. Uh huh. <laughs> and it's like, you know what? We might end up good yeah. one day. It will not be this day. Well, especially when the attitude is, oh, hey, everything's cool, right? No. And it's like, uh, no, no, no. Everything is not cool. This is this is yeah. not the way to do things. So, And uh, as soon as I have my chance, I'm going to hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, going to hurt you, and, and then, I'm going to do it hard, you know? And then it, uh, we, we, we also – well, actually, the episode – I, uh, the episode started with uh, uh, Officer Latte <laughs> getting busy in the back of a patrol car with a patrol officer. Oh, yeah. And when it first happens, you're not sure who's doing what. You're like, is that Tandy? What the hell's going on? And then I was like, oh, no, it's Officer Latte. Oh, oh and it's actually with another cop. Okay. Because the way they, they frame it, it, you think that there's something really, like, underhanded or weird going oh, yeah. on. And we got, like, and... Officer Latte getting extra foam right there. <laughs> You, you know, know. <laughs> you know, you're terrible. <laughs> so, um, uh, I didn't actually go back to see if that was the, 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 uh, uniform officer who handed her the coffee cup. Um, from the, actually, episodes. yes, it was, it is, it, it is, it yeah. is. Okay. So they continue. Yeah, he's just sitting up like, yeah. <laughs> I did officer latte. <laughs> yeah. I'll take extra whip. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then uh, Ty actually goes to talk to her and has a very uncomfortable conversation with her in the precinct, nervously looking around to all the other police as he's explaining to her that there's this the cop that murdered her. His brother is a dirty vice cop. And she's like, he he's like, can we talk about this somewhere else? She's like, I would have if you had told me the topic of conversation. <laughs> But he clues her in and she's like, there is no, I, she, he's, there she goes, there's nothing I can do about your uh, brother's murder. It, they, he, it was covered and buried at the highest levels. Like, that's done. He's like, well, maybe you can get him for something else. And she's like, like what? Well, he did say he stole, he stole a key of cocaine from the uh, evidence locker and bragged that it was 98% pure. And she's like, 
you heard him do this? <laughs> he's like, who it's is like, he talking you to? You what? And, well, I was I was kind of in the trunk of his yeah. car at the time. Yeah. She's like, yeah, she's like, did you see the guys talking to you? No, it was um really dark. <laughs> And then I went home covered in cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I felt like a teenage Dr. Roxo. It just yeah. was not a good night. So that puts Officer uh, Latte on the case and she begins looking into things and she's like, huh, it's real interesting. Eight years ago, all the other drug dealers in the city died. <laughs> kind of funny that they were all died or busted by this one cop, this one vice cop who no one seems to know because he's undercover and like hidden. And uh, the cop she's talking to is like, well, yeah, we call that the devil you know, which is because all the violence and shooting stuff went down and there was less gang wars, we just turned a blind eye and let the let the uh, the drug kingpin do his thing because he didn't make waves. And she's like, yeah, but the amount of product hasn't dropped. All this vice cop did was set up like a single guy's empire in the city and uh he's like why are you interested well i i'm trying to make a name for myself by like if i can bust this like kingpin that'll make that'll put me on top and she's spinning it like she doesn't know the vice cop is responsible and he's like now, well you know what's interesting about that mm -hmm. you said you know that that makes this one the devil you know which is the episode of next week's daredevil Ooh, interesting. <laughs> a little bit of, uh, yeah. Oh, look. It is foreshadowing across the Marvel television universe. Oh, God. Anyway, go on. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so she's on the case, and she actually starts leaning on the uh, Tandy's boyfriend, who's still in jail because he couldn't make bail because he foolishly donated all of his funds to an unworthy cause. <laughs> <laughs> and by that we mean because it's been a few weeks by that we mean he donated all of his ill-gotten gains to tandy getting her out of town for ten thousand dollars <laughs> which she didn't leave and she <laughs> and the cop is now explaining to him that tandy's not in trouble because uh the guy she messed with made the problem go away and he's like well it is spaghetti night in, in jail, so I won't want to miss that. She, well, good for <laughs> her. Yeah, so. Totally good for That's Oh, and she's still in town. Uh -huh. Oh, well, that's that's great. That's, that's, yeah. That's fantastic. Really did a number uh, on, that's... really screwed him over doubly <laughs> so. And uh, so Latte Cop leans on him hard and gets him to give up the name of uh, the drug dealer or one of the clubs so that she has someone to follow up with. She later on in the episode busts the drug dealer of the club and is pulling like little packets of cocaine out of her, out of various parts in her bra or whatever. So she goes, oh, well, that's all for personal use. And she's like, are you kidding? This would kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, so finally she like leans on, leans really hard on the drug dealer who's like, look, when I run out of product, a messenger shows up and gives me more and takes the money. I have never seen Mr. Big. I don't know who they are. I can't help you out. And then she proceeds to be like, are you going to keep that? Because uh, you should keep that as a gift. Like, uh, like, isn't like it are, are you going to keep that? There? I mean, I know that's all for personal use, but I have to confiscate this for evidence. Yeah. And basically, <laughs> like, like, make some snide comments about all cops being dirty and, ha all, all, and all being on the take. And that gives Latte Cop an idea. Hmm. <laughs> now this next and then the scene with her that plays out it's a little hard to read because it then cuts to her in one of the evidence lockers snorting cocaine off a countertop loudly <laughs> and I'm like oh latte cop is a dirty cop too she's just lustering and I was like oh, well I'm a little disappointed in her okay I'm sorry to tell you man but you don't go from New York New York to Nolens <laughs> Unless you did something real bad, like real bad. Yeah. New York is bad enough, okay? And I mean, to our boys in blue out in New York, to the policemen out there that might be listening, I got nothing but respect for you guys because that's one of the hardest jobs in the <coughs> country. Not police officer standard, but police officer in New York. But y'all know y'all cops out there, they're some of the, they're some of like they're in the top five or the top 10 of the bad ones in the country. So you don't go from police in Manhattan or Brooklyn or the Bronx 
to New Orleans if you did something good. Yeah. If you did something good, yeah. you go to Connecticut. Yeah. You know, you you go somewhere that doesn't have that much crime. You don't go to the Big Easy. Yeah. You know? So uh, she's sitting there doing the uh, very loudly, and after after five or six lines, the door busts open, and guess who catches her in the <laughs> act? But our dirty vice cop. And then you're like, oh wait. She was doing this on purpose. And he makes some comment like, I hope you brought enough for the, everybody. And she's like, hey, handsome. And gives him some. He does it and goes, wow, this is great stuff. And then she starts bragging about how she rolled a, uh, a club uh, <laughs> dealer to get, you know, to get some free cocaine. Because that's the easiest way to do it. Get it off the books because it's not like they're going to complain. Mm -hmm. And is bragging about how she can pick him up some more if he'd like it. And he's all like, this is some good stuff. Yeah, I think you and I can, they commiserate on how it's, how, you know, you have to break the rules to get the job done. And like, uh, uh, like the, she knew a guy that he wouldn't let you in the room unless you did a line. So like being undercover and vice, you, you have to, you have to use and, and they commiserate on that and bond. And he's like, yeah, well, you're good. You're the kind of cop I like. We, we're go. I see us going places together. And you're like, oh, okay, uh. so she's <laughs> playing him. Okay. All right. I see where this is going. Well, I, she is a New York cop. Yeah. <laughs> so she's playing. I'm like, okay, we'll see what's going on there. I, I imagine later on the series, hopefully we'll find out what, what horrible thing she did to get her demoted down to uh, <laughs> or New Orleans. But uh, meanwhile, Ty. We find out in Jaws. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Ty is getting ready for the big game. The and big game. And everyone's talking about the big game, about how this is, you know, it's the fight, it's the state finals, and this is the thing that's going to put him on the map. He overhears his mom canceling a very important political dinner to be with her son, and she says she says something that makes me love her as a parent. He he overhears this, which is perfect because he realizes what his mom is doing and how important her job is to her. And she says, no, I have to be there for him tonight, win or lose. And it's like she didn't even say she didn't say anything. Well, we have to be there so I can see him win. She's like, it doesn't matter what happens. I need to be there for my son. And I'm like message. I'm like, yep. <laughs> yes, yes. I was like, that's a beautiful, because then he realizes she's supporting him. She's not there pressuring him to perform. She's just there to be there for him because this is an important night for him. Win or lose, just going. And people actually do tell him just going to the finals is a huge honor. So there are some people, his teammates and his friends are kind of putting a little pressure on him just because they want to win and it's mm -hmm. exciting. The school wants to win. But some of the quality people in his life are like, no, man, you are just just being there. Like his mom talks, he talks. Because mm -hmm. he takes the picture of his brother and it, playing b-ball with his two friends. And they talk about his brother and his mom gives him a great talk about his brother. And he, it's a real good bonding moment for them. And he's feeling kind of wistful and wondering what happened to his brother's friends who kind of dropped off to the map after his brother was killed because, you know. She goes, one of them did real, one of them kind of disappeared and the other one made good. And, and he's like, oh, well, maybe I should look him up someday. And then he goes to put the picture on the wall and is suddenly teleported into a warehouse <laughs> where it's the guy in the picture looking at him going, hey, we were just talking about you. He goes, wow, well, I guess I must have felt it because I'm here to see you. I was just looking, thinking about you. I have this picture of you with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, he tells him how great his brother was, how proud his brother was, word talks well, about how he made before good. Before you go on, though, that is, that is actually saying a lot about Ty narratively yeah. because at first it was, how'd I get here? Now? And now he's like, Okay, this is what I do, and crap, cover story. Yeah, you know, I'm going to the finals tomorrow, and since I'm here, I'd better come up with a cover story, and there you go. So yeah. that that's um, in the in the normal lack of montage in a lot of shows mm -hmm. where people are coming to terms with their superpower, um, you see the um, the trope that I hate, and you know what trope that is? What? When a person just forgets how to lie. <laughs> that whole, hey, Ty, I was just thinking, oh, we were just talking about you. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, the sheep, huh, huh, talking to me about what? Oh, you're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's just like, yeah, well, I was looking at this picture of you and my brother. That's it. That's yep. all. Just stop yep. there. 
stop forgetting how to speak English. <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> and he doesn't like overtly lie either. He just kind of makes some not some ha- some truthful like non comical comment, and the guy just fills in. Yeah. And they have a great conversation. He talks about how you know he's the boss, and now he's got a business going on, and you know, how, he, how he misses thinks about his brother every day, and. But, you know, and you know, his brother would be so proud. And again, it's a great bonding moment. And, and it gives and ties real happy about it. And, uh, you know, so, again, his power takes him where he needs to be, not necessarily where he wants to be. And then. Uh, uh, meanwhile, Tandy is like, hmm, this. Oh, ties. Ty's got to get to school because he's doing this, these, this big cheerleader thing. There's lots of cheerleaders going on. And she goes. I have an idea. While the cheerleaders are busy, I'm going to use my magic knife to cut through all the lockers in the women's lockers room and rummage around for uh, school uniforms mm-hmm. so that I can pretend to be a high school girl because she figures out in looking at the social media pages of the uh, three executives she's currently stalking that they like to be around expensive girls, i.e. professional call girls. Yeah. So she dresses up as a peaches and cream she basically sets herself up as a high class hooker and gets a, and lies and gets a job as a job at an escort service specifically so she can be hired to work as entertainment at the corporate at the extron is rocks on rocks on yeah rocks on rocks on we do cocaine <laughs> <laughs> we make cocaine, cocaine. <laughs> but uh uh, so she gets invited to their corporate party where she's working the party, walking around, touching everybody, getting their, getting their hopes. And, uh, and it works. The problem is while she's do she's doing this. So she has her big moment mm-hmm. where she goes to the party and this is epic. Same time. Ty has his big moment. He's going to the state champions. And that's when we start doing that kind of, that kind of interesting thing they do where they yeah. juxtaposition their, they cut back and show that their powers are linked because she's walking around touching people, getting their hopes, which is causing Ty to get everyone's fears every time he bumps up against them playing basketball. And one of the first things he learns is the the referee is blowing calls in his favor. And he's like, why is the ref being like that? Because in the past, they have blown calls against, against him. him. Yeah. And now they are obviously cheating and for him. And he's like, what? And he happens to touch one of the... Uh, Touches the ref at one point and sees that the ref's fear is that he is going to be murdered for not throwing the game. Mm -hmm. And he's like, crap. And the interesting thing about when they start seeing the hopes and fears in everyone's uh, uh, narrative, the uh, Tandy sees it. She's still in the forest and everything is set in that same glass room Mm -hmm. that Ty first saw her fears in. Mm-hmm. and he's seeing everyone in the Louisiana uh, Bayou uh, Bayou that Tandy saw him saw his hopes in mm-hmm. so they seem to have that that seems to represent this habit I got assuming within their within each one's respective minds I guess I thought it was kind of a neat point I thought I thought it was kind of a neat cinematographically and also kind of cheap because they get to reuse the sets uh yeah so it was, a, but it's kind of cool because it ties back into the fact that it's it is, they're seeing the other people's fears and hopes, but they're seeing them inside their mind, i.e., telepathically, instantly, so that you know, uh, there is a funny thing. It does show that when Ty does it, it causes people to be a little discombobulated. They're like, what what just happened? And because uh, you know they're experiencing a flash of their greatest fear. Well, actually, and um, when I hate he's, to be that guy, but yeah. actually, um, according to the comic lore, when Ty uses his powers, he's killing them. So he's taking, he's well, drinking their them. life force. Yeah, because when the the people are he's playing basketball and people are getting in and, and they're trying to block him, and every time they touch him, he gets a flash of their fear, and then they kind of like stagger fall over, and, yeah, and fall over. So he's just getting a straight shot to the uh, down the court. And the problem is, as he's doing it, he's seeing each one of the opposite team's terror at being beaten or uh, killed. The one weird one was he goes against the one guy, and he is a Marine running for cover while being bombed. And I'm like, 
Okay, that's a that's a. I guess he was afraid he was gonna have to. He's going to the military. Yeah. If, uh, again, if he felt if, um, if he lost the you have family from the Midwest, uh-huh. and the Midwest and the South are very similar in the fact that the local sports sporting event mm-hmm. that is what you do. Yeah. So they're in Louisiana. <laughs> if you are playing basketball or football in Louisiana, it's you win or you get out of my house. Um, winning this game is the only way I'm going to get a scholarship to college mm-hmm. type of thing. So yeah. if I don't win this game, I got to join the military. I'm off to Iraq. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. And put yourself in the idea of a, or in the mindset of a high school senior mm-hmm. from where the rest of your family is from. And it'll be totally clear because yeah. I totally saw that too. Yeah. Where I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Especially since one of my brothers essentially got kicked out of the house to go to the military as mm-hmm. soon as he turned 18. That was the rule in our house. It was college, military, either way, that ain't your room no more. <laughs> and, um, right, yeah. You know, so, so so he's seeing this and this is playing on his mind. And then they go to the uh, it, it, during the uh, uh, halftime. Mm-hmm. He's he is weirded out. Uh, there was one more thing where they throw the ball at him mm-hmm. and the ball uh, passes through his hands. Yeah. Like he's not there for a second, and he's like, "What the My hell, God, man? What the hell just happened?" Mm-hmm. And um, so he's in. He's like, "Man, my powers are getting weirder and weirder. What the hell's going on?" And he's leaning. He, he uh, or, or actually, the first symptom is he he grabs the ball and he's he's on the ground trying to keep them from grabbing the ball. They're fighting over the ball, and then suddenly the ball vanishes and shows up at Tandy at the. Bounce falls from the air and bounces in the middle of Tandy's party, mm-hmm. and like one of the guys she's stalking, like grabs it and goes, "What the hell? Where are those interns? Get rid of this ball!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, she's like, "Well, that was kind of weird and random," and continues to move on. Later on, Ty, Ty's, Ty's like, "He's tired. He's like, what the hell's up with my powers?" He sits down, he relaxes for a second, and suddenly he's standing in front of Tandy, and she's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "What are you doing?" She, he's like, "You're running around using your powers, and we're connected. It's making my powers go crazy. Knock it off! I'm doing something important." And, and she's like, uh, "This is important too." And they actually have the conversation where I love the fact that he figures out that it's her screwing around mm-hmm. that's making him go wonky because he knows they're connected. So that whole like. That whole we're gonna spend two seasons wondering if they'll ever figure out how, that their powers are, need to work. No, no, they are, they they know that now. There's yeah. this Claire. He knows, and he's like, "How am I gonna get back? I'm in the middle of something." And she's like, "We should try that almost dying thing." And he's like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> and then she helps him out with that. She's like, "Here, <laughs> let me help you with that." And she shoves him off a balcony. <laughs> and when I first saw it, I thought, "Oh, this is gonna suck if it doesn't work." <laughs> Cause and according to everything that this show has been doing up until this point, it <laughs> shouldn't have worked. <laughs> so he falls out of the balcony into a small fountain down below. Like not a, oh, thank you, I'm, I'm in the swimming pool, I'm fine. No, this will just prevent me from breaking my spine, but I still might break an arm or get a concussion. Yeah. Sploosh into this little fountain, yet people are like, what the hell was that? And there's nothing in the water. And he's back in the, uh, in the locker room soaking wet like, <laughs> so he towels off and gets back into it in the game and he he's trying as hard as he can but it, it is it is not good and unfortunately because he keeps seeing everyone's fears and he knows that there are forces cheating mm-hmm. to make him win he's not happy with it and they the ref keeps making bad calls to support him and he's like and it comes down to you know that one shot there's five seconds on the clock if he makes the shot they win the state finals if he fails the shot they, they, they lose yeah. they lose he goes in he pauses for a second he takes the shot and he misses he beefed it he beefed it and you know then he looks over and he sees the rival team go absolutely insane and he looks down like he's ashamed, but then he has a secret smile of, I did the right thing. As in, we were getting points we didn't deserve. I balanced the scale. And uh, the uh, the uh, later on, Evie, mm-hmm. that was a nice scene, by the way. Mm-hmm. When he comes home. Oh, wait, which one? The When he, when he meets up with Evie. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he comes home. 
and he's tired and he's, he's got Beck going on in his head. So yeah. yeah. And, and there's some effed up all. stuff. So here's some F- He's got crazy weird superpowers going on. He just threw the game that everyone said was the perfect, was he should have won because it was the right thing to do. And he's not, he doesn't know who he is or what's going on. He walks in and there's Evie in his bedroom wearing his Leatherman, Letterman jacket. And he's like, how the hell did you get in here? And she's like, <laughs> you should really lock your window. It's a security hazard. And then he's like, well, I guess you can Best be- girlfriend ever <laughs> and he's like well i guess you can give me that jacket back now and she's like why well you don't want to be with a loser everyone at school is gonna hate me and she goes i don't hate you i know what you did i know who you are <laughs> and again there's this little subtext like like no i know who you are even though you don't and she goes i know what you do i watch you and i saw what you did as in she realized she knew that he saw the cheating saw what was going on and did what he did to, to have the game go fair. Well, it's really interesting that you bring up the importance of Evie's sight because so far, mm-hmm. the women in this show are the ones who kind of have the biggest clue. Yeah. You know, the mom, Tandy, Evie, Evie's amazing aunt, you know. Mm-hmm. But keep in mind, it's easy to forget Evie is a witch. Yeah. <laughs> she's So when she's like, I see you. Yep. I see, see you. you. And I know, <laughs> you know who you are. As in, You may not know who you are yet. I know who you are. And more importantly, every time he touches her, he doesn't get any visions because she's shielded. Mm-hmm. And then she takes off the jacket. She's not wearing anything under that jacket. Now, I don't really like that because we're looking at high school characters. Mm-hmm. I'm aware that the actress who plays Evie is 19 now that's my daughter's age so i'm looking at this and i'm kind of going well it's legal and yeah she's really really hot but i don't like the idea of sexualizing minors that's Mm. one of my big like it's one of my hugest problems in the entertainment industry as is like i don't know if you've you've seen any current pictures of millie bobby brown you know her as 11 from stranger things and they've got her made up like she's 30 35 like oh yeah isn't she hot it's like no no she's not hot she's a child <laughs> you know she she's a child so again not saying she ain't fine though because <laughs> she fine though like, it, it, or as um my caucasian middle class friends would say but she hot though you know so again <laughs> I, I i see that well i was just <laughs> thinking from the the she would knew that he oh yeah was going to be conflicted and she's like no i'm there for you yeah and yeah so yeah and so he needed he, a little bit of healing yeah a little bit of healing he had that feeling and he needed some healing something that was good for him yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and actually he did because he was a bit of a rough batch and uh meanwhile while all this is going on tandy is walking around and and touching all of the uh uh people in the room and uh, now I actually think about it because they all like smile and light up and look at her like oh hey and at the time I was just thinking well it's because you know pretty girls walking by and casually touching them but she's also healing them or curing yeah, their um, that, that's one of the big things in the comics daggers daggers actually restore people's life points and cures them of drug addictions so in the show they're not going to do the dare message where the two where the two yeah. kids originally came from <clears throat> but the he knows their fears and he eats their life force and she understands their hopes and restores theirs um which hopefully by season three if they get a season three it's going to be one of those their relationship is either symbiotic or codependent depending on who's writing because if ty starts starving it doesn't matter where the source of life comes from Mm -hmm. he becomes kind of galactus for people Mm -hmm. And she can sustain him because she's just putting off more life energy just all the time. More life, life, life. So those two are like bright and dark or light and dark, life and death type of thing. Yeah. And when he gets on a justice kick in the comic books, it is glorious. (laughs) It is. It's you or Jay Walker. (laughs) You stole a pencil. (laughs) And she's like, Ty. And he's like, what? I'm hungry. Have you a know. Snickers, baby. <laughs> he kind of turned into a soul-sucking monster exactly. when you're hungry. <laughs> exactly. It very much is a, need a minute? Have a Twix. You know? 
Oh, why? So uh, she's walking around, and that's where the, you start seeing the. So she targets her three big execs, who mm-hmm. are the three big conspiracy guys with the unknown link in between them. And you get to see their their hopes, which are weird little metaphor plays. <laughs> and the first one is the first one is kind of again, it's all set. The first one guy walks into the the the, the glass office, and he's got two sexy women there, obviously there for him. And he sits down in the big chair. He's at the big desk, and there's some random dude who is his butler holding a drink for him. And we're <laughs> like, okay, well, this guy obviously wants to be the that man ain't in a charge. Random dude, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, when we first see it, it's a random dude. And then the next, uh, the uh, next uh, person is same same room big office this guy's in the big chair he's making the big phone deals he looks up and right across his desk is a giant art piece where that same random dude is like melted into the paint <laughs> and held captive so he gets to stare at this guy held helpless all day and we're like oh well this guy is like someone they all wish they could control or they hate or they want revenge on so this guy is obviously hello their it's boss. the boss. It's, their it's boss. like, oh, that guy must be the boss. Yeah. And then the third guy's yeah. sitting in his chair as the boss guy crawls underneath him and he leans back and does that thing. And she's like, holy crap. <laughs> she gets a look. That's, that one actually gets there to Blanche a little bit. Like, <laughs> okay. Like, uh, what am I looking at? <laughs> oh, okay. okay. And this is the American dream. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm going to follow fish. That's that's what I think I'm going to do. So, uh, so during when Ty teleports to her and they have a conversation and she's like, I, there's this this mis- there's this mysterious guy who's in all their hopes. Like, he's he's the guy. I got to figure out who he is. And they're talking and Ty's talking about it. And, oh, look, there he is right there in that photo. And this caption says who he is. And she remembers who he is. He was the guy who came came to her house and took all her dad's things. He was mm-hmm. the guy who destroyed her family. He's the guy responsible for it all. And she sees his name, goes back, checks the paperwork later. Does and she touches herself and then see that guy drawn and quartered at that point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she uh, she uh, uh, looks at all the paperwork and she finds more evidence on the paperwork that this is the guy who actually signed off on it and everything. So this is the guy. And she like prints out his picture on the pad and puts it in the big hole in the middle. So this is, this is, this is the dude who is the center of all the conspiracies. He's Mr. This big. is where all he's of the, the pieces of yarn are going, going to point. To yeah. So <laughs> he is the one ultimately responsible for everything. Everyone else in the company is culpable and accessories, but he is Mr. Bad. And now he has, she has a face. And she has a name. And um, uh, while while she's at the party, she has a random conversation with a woman thinking that she's she's having too much vodka. But she's like, oh, no, I have stage fright. I got to go make a speech. And she she gives her some little pep talk. And it seems to be a throwaway moment. Foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, even watching that as a, as the viewer, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, well, that's going to come up later. That's going to be an important moment. Not that it's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I so, call yeah. it, that would be Chekhov's pep talk. Pep talk. Yeah. So, the uh, uh, the uh, so later on she she manages to track down Mister Big and she's like at his door in the middle of the night. Hi, my car broke down and my phone my phone out of charge. Can I use your phone to call AAA? And he looks at her and is like, No. <laughs> like crap because you should learn how to change your own tire and then he goes out and proceeds to change your tire which which was a nice switch up cause yeah it, it was very much like you expect the oh hello young girl in a school girl outfit that comes to my door randomly at night can i use your phone no you should learn to change your own tire young lady why if you were my daughter you would already know these things and it's very important <laughs> yeah because this is the guy she expects to be a monster or you know so I, i'm expecting him when he does know i'm like oh he's gonna be paranoid he knows this is a trap she's she's overplayed her hand i'm like no no then he does the genuine nice guy thing and you're like okay well this guy is he, he's saving the cat so the first time we actually see, we see the villain is in an act of charity which is very disarming and confusing and i think it's a little confusing for her and then she touches him and she sees his hopes and they are horrible you're right they they are like that's the thing it's you can be an evil person 
and still be nice. Yeah. And they really show that. Let's uh yeah. Let's take a quick look over at um over at what his hopes might be. And it's like I'm just gonna yep. yeah. She's thinking about, <laughs> she's, she's like thinking I'm gonna shake this fool. Uh, she, could, she could end it right now. She could take her revenge or she could see what's inside his head. Now for those of you guys watching on SoundCloud, we're doing that thing, and um, we're taking a look at this whole gig. So yeah, she's going out to touch him, and oh look, it's that bright day where Tyler's trying to commit suicide by cop. And this is different because now she's at the waterfront. Normally she's been a corporate album. And this is guys open up lobster traps. Again, Louisiana. <laughs> right? And oh, money. money. Cash. And look at the going, money. So he's going lobster. He's going He's going crabbing. Lobster caps for cash? Yep. He's like, what the and hell? This like, is yeah, a weird thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, oh look. It's oh, a dead guy. It, those lobster traps are dead oil workers. Who is right <laughs> into their pockets of the cash? Oh, well, they're dead. But, oh, yep, yep, yep. So this guy's hope. Is he to, wants the rings on their freaking fingers at this point. He wants to <laughs> he he wants to harvest the dead <laughs> routinely that he has seeded out there. And then uh to make matters worse, one of the guys isn't quite dead, so he murders him and she gets a name. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's very much the I'm not dead. Shh, just give me the money. Just, just yeah. give me the money. Okay, yeah, so yeah. he finishes this guy who's almost dead off to take to steal money from him. And you're like, oh, my God, this guy is a monster. Yeah, because it wasn't just that he was it wasn't just it's not just that he's robbing from the dead. He's he is harvesting them, which means he that, that they are a like he's routinely <laughs> setting up these things to happen to a harvest. They harvest these men's. Well, when you wives. think about it, it's. He puts himself in a position to profit off of what they're doing, and then he gets insurance money on top of that. Yeah. So it's like he can double dip from the same thing as long as they're disposable. Guess what? That is what full-fledged top de um, supply-side economics really is. Yeah. I mean, that that's... Yeah. So he's a good CEO, by the way, because he's a complete sociopath. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, so he does that, and she gets the name of the guy, and then she that's when it, that takes her back. To that young woman that she talked to, who is now a research scientist for that same company, shooting a commercial where she's talking about her dad and how he inspired her to go work for that company to find ways to save the world. Now, if you noticed um, during the shoot of that, mm -hmm. if you go all the way back to episode two, you can hear Ty's mom setting up that shoot. Really? Uh, get me some kind of em environmental scientist on this anyway, and blah, 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 blah. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's showing so. they're more intertwined. Their fates are more intertwined than they realize. Well, you know, right. Nolens is a small town. <laughs> so, so uh, meanwhile. Back at the ranch. Poor Ty. <laughs> so Ty has another, uh, in a, in a, another uh, uncontrolled teleport, and he teleports back to uh dirty cop big surprise there that that seems to be on mm -hmm. his subconscious so he keeps it teleport just in time to catch dirty cop having a conversation with his brother's best friend in his new business complaining that a policeman rolled one of his club dealers <laughs> and that they have an arrangement and that's not supposed to happen and they're uh, and he's like what and then ever since you shot my my boy, and he's like, and, and Ty's look on his face when he finds out that his brother's best friend is in bed with, his, knowingly mm -hmm. in bed with his brother's with the dude killer. Who killed his brother, yeah. After they'd had that moment, that just breaks his heart. Yeah, he's just sitting up there like, but but you were like my brother, you 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 and that's an interesting thing about Ty is. The way his character is being written, it's like the writers are specifically going, angry black kid, yes. Suppressed angry black kid. This is important because mm -hmm. if it was the, you mother, that's all we got is stereotype yeah. and all that stuff. So he really exemplifies ghetto rage where like it's so much inside mm -hmm. you, but you don't know where to put it because expressing it will, ex will, um, 
will um, substantiate any stereotypes about the angry black yeah. kid. Uh, everything that you do will get you in trouble, but like it's in there, so where do you put it? You know, and mm -hmm. most of the time the answer is booze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so he and then you get to hear the argument between uh, Dirty Cop and his brother's friend about how that, like you don't tell me what to do. You know, he's like, you, I You're don't not work my for, real dad. <laughs> you don't, I don't work for you. You know, like with this arrangement can change at any time, yada, yada, yada. But now we found out that that one drug kingpin is somehow his brother is a big part of that organization. Whether he's the actual main guy or just one of his lieutenants, we have yet to see. I'm assuming it goes higher up the food chain. Than this. Mm -hmm. But, uh, that is, that is, that's sad. It really is. Because, yeah, like like when he says, after you, you shot, high he hears that, and he's just like, oh. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all in all, <clears throat> like, what would you rate this episode? Uh, I actually really like this episode. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely give this a solid four of a kind. Wow. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I like this episode better than the one before it. I, I'm almost as like this one as much as the first one, just because they show them dovetailing mm -hmm. and more importantly, the characters are smart. Yeah. Like you said, <laughs> the characters, they don't, they don't do the stupid thing. Like, Oh, I got caught out and I can't, I've forgotten how to talk or lie. <laughs> like in the ring. Ty's like, I got this. I'm covering and just, just go rolls along. You get, and you get some, and also the fact that they're not in denial about their powers. Like, She's happy her powers work, so look, I got control of my powers. First thing I do, use them. Mm -hmm. And use them to further my agenda. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, good. And then Even he, if it means I use yeah. them irresponsibly. And, <laughs> and then he's like, my powers are going crazy. It's your fault. I know it. I can feel it because we're connected. So, so that's none of that denial about, yeah. and she's like, oh, no, just, oh, it's really easy to control your powers. Just almost die. And he's like, what? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. very much the, oh, no, I know this works. You know, there could be other ways. You're right, but how long is that going to yeah. take? So, yeah, take a header off, of, and off the balcony. Both, <laughs> and then both of them, her on purpose and him on accident, dramatically further their knowledge of the situation, mm -hmm. as in each of them now has the next person up on the ring of the conspiracy of their lives that they're trying to figure out. Right. So we're advancing the plot. They're growing as characters, and they, we're not doing that stupid. Will they? Won't they? We gotta have the. We gotta have that. You know, drama. We're, we're teenage drama angst for the purpose of angst. Like, no, we're getting right to the superheroing. Yeah. So. All right. We'll see. When I watched this episode, I definitely, definitely gave this one a solid full house. I didn't give it a four of a kind. Mm -hmm. Um, primarily because it did a lot with character <laughs> development whole lot with character yeah. development um but they're not a team yet and mm. um and they didn't like they these are one of the episodes i can't call them fillers but honestly i don't really care about latte cop i don't quite understand what she's doing and i think the the problem in the writing is um what she's doing is what is she trying to catch bad cop is she trying to that I, I i just don't know it's not it's not clear it's not clear yeah. enough i see that to take yeah. a look um and um they broke the formula of the juxtaposition between the two of them for like the first 20 minutes and that was jarring hmm. um because <clears throat> every episode from the beginning until this one is he does this she does this he does this she does this this and you know you're getting an a story and a b story that are absolutely obviously connected to make a giant a plus story and they didn't quite get around to doing this or at least i couldn't see how they were doing this until maybe halfway through the episode yeah because we added c story of latte cop and what's her deal and yeah. why is she here and how does yeah. she fit in how does she fit into this this you know pattern now all that being said Everything that they shot, including the stuff with Latte Cop, was very well done. Yeah, <laughs> it was very well done. The um, the story was compelling, and that's why this this didn't get the four of a kind from me. Primarily because, okay, I don't care about Latte Cop. Okay, now I kind of care about Latte Cop because Latte Cop has had a moment with Tandy, and now she finally has a moment with Ty. Yeah, but that took way too long. It should have been the next episode, not skip two. Yeah, you know, um. And then we didn't really 
check in on a lot of other characters. Like, we got a lot of focus on Tandy and Ty. I'm good mm -hmm. with that. But we didn't get a whole lot on the awesome ant with a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't get a whole lot of, you know, we needed some more, we needed some more mentor <coughs> moments, if you will, you know? Um, some moments with voodoo priestess aunt mm -hmm. um, desperately needs 12-step mom and, or um, <clears throat> thrown myself in a corporate lifestyle mom. One of those three. Yeah, we haven't checked in with mom after finding out that her boyfriend was murdered. Yeah, exactly. And... I guess yeah. I guess we haven't checked in with mom because mom's entire thing is unconscious or on on <laughs> she's probably in the worst bender she's ever been in. Yeah. So, yeah, Tandy's probably straying far because we saw where Tandy was like try, like having the having that moment of, oh God, I gotta tell her, because why she's like why aren't you returning my calls? Uh, I don't know if I can tell her. And knowing Tandy, she might not have. She just might have walked away and not said anything. Right. She might not have wanted to deal with her mom. Right. So we don't know. What we don't happened. know. We don't know what happened there. That was kind of left up in the air. And that seems like an important thing to touch on. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got a really good point. The fact that they they haven't given us a closure on that and that that poignant ending scene or to, even just the next step in yeah. that story. Like, I don't need closure. I'm just kind of like, uh, you got a plot thread dangling right there. Could I just. Just, yeah. just, just kind of yeah. like dangling yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. Just like, is Tandy's mom and is, is Tandy's mom like, is, is that going to be the moment that puts her to rock bottom and sends her to rehab? I mean, <laughs> right? you know, like, come on, guys, give us some, give, in, we, we, give us an update. Yeah, you got, yeah, you got to give us a little something on that. Um, so, all right, but all in all, you know, I'm yeah. still, still, just, uh, still I'm digging not, it. Not gonna lie, I, I love this show. Mm -hmm. I am waiting for season for season two. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> so we are on to the devil. Now we only have a half hour left because um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep this tight at 90. So I'm just going to give a quick rundown because a lot happens in episode five. A whole lot happens in episode five. Oh. And um, it's um, it's a thing. Now, this episode opens up um, this episode of Daredevil um, season three, episode five. Um, opens up with a very interesting thing. And we open up with Dexter um, totally doing his um, his morning routine. I get up, I focus, and for those of you guys on SoundCloud listening, it's showing his very obsessive, compulsive, very regimented um, kind of thing. Um, you know, in the morning he's got oh, two coffee cups. He has to adjust you know, the coffee cap through the they perfect They have to face the line. same way. And it's easy. And then you get a picture of the suicide center. And just to push the point, they go, look, cute redheaded girl. And he's standing there like Charlie Brown. Isn't that fun? Um, but we know he is a star FBI agent. Oh, <laughs> that was a nice little yeah. scene. And, of course, he leaves his apartment. Because when, and, um, yeah, when he closes the door, however, and, uh, that uh, you missed that bit. Oh, he, he, yeah, he, he closed the door, and it's like he closed the door, his perfect picture falls, and he comes back and he fixes it. Did he hear it? Does he know? We don't know. Um, but you, when the but, perfect picture, when he closes the door and it falls, that shows that his his highly regimented and highly focused world is not nearly as stable. As it appears, I'm glad that you're noticing the, yeah. the visual storytelling. Yeah, I like on that. that. The, suddenly, um, that's like, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, that that that's Hitchcocky in there. <laughs> sideways. That's that, yeah. Yeah, that that's very yeah. okay. Everything is neat. Everything is regimented. He has two of everything. They're all facing the same direction. Now I'm going to work and. Kirk! Okay, this guy might be crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this yeah. you know, um, and then they put the hammer mm. in that. Uh, they put the nail in that coffin by. It slid down the wall a little bit when he closed the door. And if you guys have a chance to see this for yourselves, of course, it's on Netflix and all that stuff. Um, if you notice, that door had a lot of locks on it. Yeah. <laughs> Paranoid much? <laughs> a whole bunch of locks on that door. And um, But when they did the whole door lock and all that jazz, um, Cause you, you, it from fell sideways you know the the picture fell sideways but he was gone he wasn't in the room so it's like he knows 
the door. Uh, he knows the door, knocks the picture sideways, or he heard it, or he sensed it. We don't know. Well, but um, it, again, that that from a film analysis point, that's also obviously a symbol symbol oh, of, of his internal mental la- landscape. Yeah, of course. That I is, mean, is, if we take a good look at this, we've got um, we've got a chain lock, a deadbolt, a second deadbolt. <laughs> um, and the actual door lock. The door lock and uh, the door lock that stops the handle. <laughs> you know, yeah. so he's got five locks. Five locks on yeah. his door. And I also, and, um, that also you yep. very easily argue that that door is also representative of the, his mind, the walls he holds between the outside world. Yeah. And, oh, look, it's broken. No, no, no. I'm going to reach in and straighten it out, which means he is just a hairbreadth away from completely in, complete insanity. I'm glad that you noticed that because that is what this episode is about. Ah. Um, in this episode, it pretty much opens up with him doing that and going in to talk to Fisk or going in to do his morning thing. So he has to take the Kingpin his breakfast. <clears throat> and in this episode, the Kingpin gets a file. He's like, who is this Poindexter? Who is this? Who is this? And you get to have this, the background on the Dexter character. Like he practically grew up, he grew up sort of in the system, sort of not. Mm-hmm. Um, he's always been a very precise person. And when he was 11, he didn't like the pitcher on his little league team. So he hit the ball precisely hard enough and in the perfect place to kill the kid with the baseball. <laughs> On yeah yeah seriously don't you love this face <laughs> yes he he did his first kill at twelve years old at a little league game with the bat and ball from the mound the pitcher kid went woo and he went ding dead home run ain't nothing but a thing <laughs> and um whoa hey there Damien you turned out to be a nice little sociopath aren't you <laughs> yeah um. Wow. Yeah, and sure enough. Now, for those of you guys that have read the comics, um, yes, this is Bullseye. They are now making it very clear that this is Bullseye, Daredevil's arch nemesis in the field. His superpower? Precision. He can make anything a weapon when he throws it. That includes paper clips, baseballs, glass shards, his own fingernails. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So you just you know, rip out your own fingernail and throw it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. In the Ultimate Universe, Hawkeye from the Avengers, the Archer, can do the same thing. Can do that, too. Thing, yeah. But Bullseye is like a totally different level. Um, oh, oh. When he... Hawkeye, Bullseye. There's... Yeah, yeah I, exactly. Oh, completely different characters. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was expecting Alan Alda myself. But <laughs> um, it's an old joke, guys. Look it up. Um but yeah, um, when Bullseye came back into the Daredevil comic, when Kevin Smith was writing, it was a bad guy was talking to a dude saying what he needed done and all that stuff. And the dude is just reading a book and you see white gloves and he's just reading a book, reading a book, reading a book. And it's like, what do you think? And the dude flicks a paper clip. It does five bank shots off of the wall and then grabs the page in the book perfectly and he closes it saying... We might have a deal. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Just you, to... you. You can't kill people with math. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, and Fisk is kind of going, hmm. Yeah, this is fascinating. This is fascinating. Now this episode is split between the relationship between Bullseye and Fisk. And the relationship between Matt and everybody else, because Matt is still messing up. But the B story with Officer Nazim, this Mm -hmm. is interesting because by this point in the show, we're seeing how a good cop or rather a good FBI agent turns bad Mm. because it's it's a very much he's going death by inches, inch by inch by Mm. inch by inch. But all the information that Fisk is providing is helping the FBI out a lot. It was his idea. He's on point for all these things. He's getting his pay grade. He's getting a bunch of stuff. But the more that he's doing this, the more control Fisk is having over his life. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, you're being very successful because I'm helping you. And I can easily take it all away. You know, that's coming. Oh, yeah. you know, it's coming. Um, But the second part. Um, about this, the relationship between Matt and everyone else. Now, um, 
Matt has essentially talked to Foggy mm -hmm. and went into the prison in the last episode to talk to the dude that supposedly shanked Kingpin. <laughs> um, and that, that, yeah, that's when they went after him because they thought he was Foggy. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so now the FBI is, um, is checking out Matt's apartment that Karen and Foggy have been paying for ever since the Defenders when a building got dropped on him. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're they're kind of going through um, that whole thing, but you're seeing like a lot of the, you're seeing a lot of relationship stuff going down, and Karen and Officer Nazim are just, they are so just, Karen ain't having it. Mm -hmm. Because Nazim is the reason that Kingpin is not in prison and in a penthouse. And Karen's like, you don't get it. This dude is bad. This dude, this dude, I worked hard to yeah. put him in prison. And you, 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 you know. And um, yeah, so now they're looking for Matt Murdock. They're like, hey, where's Matt? What's going on with Matt? Matt, you know. And, um, and he's, and it's like, you know what? If I knew, I wouldn't tell you. Me, 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 me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there, there's, um, so sure enough, um, you know, we get, we learn a whole bunch of stuff, but the interesting part of the story, at least the interesting part for me was, um, looking at the history of Bullseye, mm -hmm. especially through the eyes of Kingpin and Kingpin is like, Hmm. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? And, um, yeah, as you can see um, here, we've got, yeah, look at that. I have great aim. I have great aim. Strike two. Oh, you know, type thing. And, yeah, again, because all the kid was doing was just practicing his pitch, practicing his pitch, practicing his pitch, you know. <clears throat> and, um... <laughs> And the coach is like, yeah, no, 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 you, yeah, nobody's got, yeah, you, you don't do, I've been pitching a perfect game. I'm pitching a perfect game. You don't take me out of the game. And so, of course, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. So later on, he kills the coach. That's who he hit with the ball. Oh, so right. the yeah. other pitcher was like, oh, well, he's up there. Punk, dead coach, done. <laughs> and, um, and later on, he actually gets work at a suicide hotline. Um, when he's an adult to try and deal with his sociopathy because or his psychopathy because he is a psychopath this is very very given at, yeah. at this point so he's like I realize I'm not I'm not a normal humans so I'm going to attempt to help other humans in an attempt to figure out what I am yeah and, oh um, well we have a clinical term for you for your condition it's called nuts <laughs> <laughs> well one of the things um, that happened in his past was he got a therapist as a child and um, it's important. well. I would certainly hope so. If you hit a ball and it killed your coach, because obviously no one could do that on purpose, <laughs> that would still be like that would really mess with you for the rest of your life. So yeah. you should get therapy for that. And his therapist actually stuck with him for a long time until she had to retire because of sickness, and then eventually she died. But I, I had to do a lot of research on mm. sociopathy for this mm -hmm. for this season, <clears throat> and. Um, a psychopath is interesting because they don't exactly love, but they do form attachments and they want to be loved. Mm -hmm. And this therapist loved him in a way that a mother would. And at risk of quoting the Watchmen, she was his only connection to this world. So when she died, he kind of broke. Um, did, um, he didn't break. He just let go, you know. And I want to—I really want to make that want to differentiate that for you guys out there. Most people think, "Oh, this guy had a breakdown, and there was crying, there was tears, there was this, there was that." It wasn't like that. When a person lets go, excuse me, when a sociopath or a psychopath lets go, it's not no. It's but you can't die. Please, I'm asking you to live, and they're dead. And it's like, well, there went that. What's up? I just don't care about you. What? I don't know what right and wrong is. <laughs> Baby in the traffic. What? It was in my way. Kind of thing. Yeah. It, it, it really, it's much more casual, much more quiet than that. And um, 
I'm looking for that scene right now because he ah there it is there it is there it is um yeah um and as he's working in the you know as he's working in the um yeah <clears throat> he's working at the suicide hotline and um the interesting thing about a psychopath <clears throat> um the really interesting thing about a psychopath is they understand human emotions they don't have them but they understand it you know mm -hmm. and um they have a great moment here where um i'm gonna turn the sound back on on this but yeah um, all the flashbacks in this one is really, again, how do you show a flashback? And of course they chose black and white. But yeah, if you take a look here, and it's like, he's working the suicide hotline. It's like, wow. Tell me, Craig. It, girl. It's like, tell me, Craig. Are you thinking about taking your own life right now? Life? Okay. Yeah. Do you have a plan? All the standard questions you get on the suicide hotline, so I've heard. What kind of gun do you have, Craig? <laughs> and, uh, and of course, it's like, yeah, you have a plan. You this, you that. Oh, and what kind of a gun do you have? Okay, now have you cleaned it properly? Have you, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah that, that suddenly, suddenly white because he puts down the clipboard with all the questions <laughs> and like, these are what you're supposed to do. And it's like, oh, oh, no, you suddenly, I'm suddenly very interested in your plan. Tell me more details. Yeah. So, oh, you're gonna help me? Stop? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I'm just interested. Um, well, well, this is all part of the process. So tell me, what kind of gun do you have? Yeah, <laughs> not crazy <laughs> at all. So, so sure I'm assuming enough. I'm assuming Fisk being superposed in the background shows that that he's viewing it. Um, he's reading the files. So that's he's reading the files so and he's Fisk's, picturing everything. So this is basically the theater, the theater, Fisk's theater of the mind. Yes. Of what he's reading. And he's doing a complete psychological profile of this dude because he's like, I see potential in you. And if I see potential, that means there must be something there. So, yeah. Nice. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, take another look here. I'm familiar with the M11. Did a couple of years in the Army, got real cozy with the M11. It's reliable. <laughs> let me ask you a question, Craig. Here, oh, let me ask you something, bro. This yeah, asshole stepdad of yours has given you so much grief. Why take your own life? Why not? Take a deep breath, Craig. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just makes me laugh every time. Because, yeah, if, um, again, for those of you guys out there, I even got subtitles up, but that's not going to help on SoundCloud. Uh, yeah, it's like, wait a second, Craig. So if your stepdad is being a jerk, why do you want to kill yourself? Why not take a deep breath and, uh, you know, think about what you're doing there and all that stuff with the serious checks position of he's being mean and you want to kill yourself? You realize how unlogical that is, especially since you have such a reliable gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Worm Tongue. <laughs> hey, you know. And again, this is this is kind of, and of course, Kingpin is like, hmm, this is this is this is fascinating right here. I'm 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 liking this guy's style. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's um uh, there's, you know, a lot of moments like that are coming through, and of course, the episode ends. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they go through the standard Netflix stuff. There's a fight. There's a couple of conversations and. One of the things that Dexter does is, you know, the when I pulled up the little redheaded girl, the one in the picture, he kind of like says, hey, can we get together? You know, it happens. I'm in town. I'm on the security detail and all that stuff. Can we get together? What she doesn't know is that he's been stalking her for the past three episodes. <laughs> yeah. And he kind of lets it slip at dinner and she's like, OK, creepy, I'm out. And. That doesn't go over well, does it? Um, he gets to see how terrible a person he really is. Ah. And that is where Kingpin can um can really you know, that's where Fisk can be like, all right, this is where this is the angle that I can get the work in, you know? Because in order for somebody to literally be taken over or their mind to be taken over, um, there has to be a leverage point 
And in this episode, Dexter tries to kill himself. And Kingpin's like, dude, you know when I was 12, I killed my father by beating his head in with a hammer. And I found that when emotions pile up, a barbaric yawp really tends to clear the head. <laughs> and so, essentially, <clears throat> Dexter bonds with Kingpin in a very father-son kind of way with the dude. I read your file, I understand you, and I think you're okay. Come here. <laughs> well, yay. <yeah. laughs> How nurturing. Yeah. 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 You're my kind of monster. <laughs> and it's you. I'm my number one. A guy. You know, and... Yep. um. Now, I gotta say, um, this season of Daredevil, it seems slow, okay? It seems very slow. Um, but what it is, is um, it's telling a lot of story. It's just very quiet about it. It's showing a lot. This is not something that you can put on in the background and just let play. You have to watch this. Mm -hmm. um, and they're taking the approach of they're making 13 mini-movies. Mm. And um, okay, yeah, they're hour long, but they play out like mm -hmm. movies, which means they're not like TV. TV is the art of writing, of dialogue, of yeah. things like that. And in this one, as you saw in the very opening scene, it's all I'm telling this story with moving pictures. Yeah, what do you see? You know, no, 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 put your phone down. Cin watch this. Yeah, very cinematographic. You know? Yeah, it's very, it's very cinematographic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and not knowing that going in kind of made it difficult because, you know, a lot of people like watching the Marvel Netflix shows for the fight scenes, the hallway fights and all that other stuff. But this one, this one slowed down. This mm -hmm. one's like this isn't you really want to see what a criminal mastermind looks like. This is it. It's really slow. It's really methodical. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have patience, you ain't a mastermind. <laughs> it's that simple, um, which given the friend circles that you and I run in, I appreciate a lot because whenever you see intelligent characters written on film, you end up with, I'm intelligent because either the plot says so or everyone else is written as idiots. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, and in this one, it's like, no, everyone here is very smart. They are, they are very intelligent, but this dude is more intelligent and he's spending time thinking about his goal. You could tell that the Kingpin's plan has been happening since a month after they put him in prison in season one. And they've been giving hints of this all the way across all the other Netflix shows. Mm -hmm. um, and the Punisher season one, um, Punisher gets thrown in jail and the Kingpin gets him out. And he's like, when the, if you could get me out of jail so easily, why are, why are you still here? And he's like, I need you out there to fight a war. When I leave, I'm going to win it. <laughs> and I'm like, Ooh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, it's all you part know. of the plan. Yeah, exactly. And this is like years in the making and just piece by piece by piece mm -hmm. by piece by yeah. piece. So this episode, I had to give a solid full house to mm -hmm. because I get the background of this of this Poindexter mm -hmm. bullseye character and um, there's a lot of consequences dealing with Daredevil like he is screwing over his friends left right and sideways in this season and his friends are going you know we're close but I'm tired of you screwing me over please stop screwing me over and he's like I can't not screw you over it's the only way to get the kingpin I know I know I know but don't think that you ain't gonna answer for this later <laughs> Because we've spent the pet Last time we saw you, a building got dropped on your head. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I woke up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so um, there's a lot of that. But there's more of that in the next episodes coming up. So, um, yeah, I had to give this one a solid thing. Uh, a solid, um, a solid <clears throat> um, um, <clears throat> three of a kind. Just a three of a kind. Um, but we're getting there. Now... Technically, we're at our hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, technically we're at our hour and a half. But I need to ask something to NP City right now. Um, I know, again, this show's called Buster Recap. So I've got the option of talking about something a lot of people have been waiting for, 
but do you guys want me to do it? And with that, I have to say, do you want me to talk about Young Justice Season 3? If the answer is yes, then I will. But it'll take another 20 minutes. So it's one of those things. Would yes. you like Would you like to learn more? Click now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to go through all that stuff. But yeah, um, now I'm not going to lie. This season of Daredevil is way darker. Way darker mm -hmm. than everything, than the other it's stuff. It's so dark. Right? Yeah, and, and really, it's, it's almost like... It's almost like the DC Cinematic Universe. I mean, wow. <laughs> wow. You know. No, I'm kidding. Although, you know, it's a Deadpool joke. Well, it looks like NP City has spoken. Impossible Pros and Vixen are like, Young Justice, yes! Encore! Encore! Uh, all right, fine. So, <clears throat> um, Young Justice, as, as you know, was a Warner Brothers cartoon that came out a few years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And it was essentially a cartoon based on Teen Titans... Um, there was another show <clears throat> or another comic that came out in the 90s called Young Justice, which was the third iteration because the Teen Titans were definitely teenagers. Mm -hmm. Then Marv Wolfman and George Perez came along and they made the New Titans, which are the ones that everybody knows. That's when Cyborg and Raven and Starfire joined the team. Um, and that essentially became, you have the Justice League. What people... Well, what the comic fans know is that the Justice League are adults. Like, Batman is in his 40s. Yeah. Superman is in his 40s. Aquaman, God knows, he's Atlantean. Wonder Woman is like 1,500 years old. But Barry Allen is in his 40s. Um, the Justice League are middle-aged. They are solid, solid adults. The Titans started as their sidekicks at 16 or so years old. That's when... Wally West, um, Dick Grayson essentially quit when he was 16 or 17, you know, um, but he was just under legal when he quit Batman and started the Titans. Mm -hmm. But then the new Titans came along and they were solidly in their mid to late 20s. Like Dick Grayson went from Robin to Nightwing at like 25, 26. When he was going to get married to Starfire, they were pushing 30. So where the teenagers go now? Yeah. And that was when they started Young Justice, which was Tim Drake and Impulse mm -hmm. and a lot of the guys that were solidly teenagers. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so a few years ago, um, Warner Brothers started this cartoon. Now, Young Justice in and of itself was shocking. It was shocking because it was, nope, these are teenagers. And it was dark for a cartoon it was what we look at the justice league and the justice uh the justice mm -hmm. league regular cartoon and justice mm -hmm. league international and it's fun but you can definitely tell it's for all audiences and it had some undertones of adult themes kind of like the superman cartoon but not as much as batman the animated series mm -hmm. okay um and then we had teen titans it had some undercurrents of dark, but all in all, when there's trouble, you know what to call. Call Cyborg. You know, it was very, yeah. very, you know, fun yeah. and young. Pop. And, uh, pop uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's very, very young and, and fun and woo hoo 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 um, And Young Justice came along and it opened up with the kind of DC movie animated mm -hmm. animation style. Um, which I liked, and you've got teenagers, but they're doing stuff. Like, the show opens um, in the very first episode where they're all fighting various ice-themed villains um, with their sidekicks. So it's Batman and Robin fighting against Mr. Freeze, um, Green Arrow and Speedy um, fighting Killer Frost, um, Flash and Kid Flash fighting Captain Cold, you know. Um, <clears throat> and all of this, oh, and of course, um, one other ice guy, because it's Aquaman and Aqualad um, in the ocean. And it's like, today's the day, today's the day. And they get taken to the Justice League Watchtower and they think, all right, we've been working at it. We are officially going to be members of the Justice League. And it's like, no, you just get a tour, just sit in the lobby. Thank you. And hmm. Speedy is like, the hell is this? <laughs> no, 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 wrong, wrong. We're not being in, we're not being inducted into the Justice League. If if we were, there wouldn't be press here looking at this. This is just a glorified tour. Screw you. I'm out of here. I quit. 
And sure enough, yeah, that's what it was. That's yeah. exactly what it was. He called it 100%. Yep. So he's like, screw that out of here. Yeah. Run. So um, Aqualad, Kid Flash, and Robin are like, you know, he's kind of got a point on that. Like, where is the real watchtower? Where is the real this? Like, okay, we're in the Hall of Justice, but we know that they do the thing on the moon. So are we just supposed to sit here or they do the thing on the satellite? So are we leaving for the satellite from here or this is just our clubhouse? Screw you guys. And they essentially go behind the Justice League's back and go on an adventure. And essentially, they form their own team. Mm-hmm. And the Justice League are like, well, we can't stop you. You're going to be doing this. Oh, and you found a teenage clone of Superman. So I guess you're going to be taking care of this. And if we can't stop you, we're not having you in the league. You're kids. We're not doing that. That's just all messed up. But if you happen to form your own team and that team happens to go on espionage missions that the very public Justice League can't do because it's bad press and it'll break lots of international laws <laughs> well if your team does that <laughs> I mean the best that we can do is send people like Black Canary and, and Green Arrow and stuff over to train you guys on how to be responsible with your powers and how to actually think and work like a team but if you um if you so happen, these troubled youths get a teen center yeah and mentors to make them do the, the the straight and narrow because when occasionally they go off the rails and, and get involved in an international incident, well, you can't blame them. They're kids. I mean, they're underage. It's not like they're actually going to do hard time. And they're running black ops. <laughs> they are the Justice League black ops team. That's what they were. And season one was amazing. They got um, Ms. Martian, um, who is the Martian Manhunter's niece, who shows how freaking terrifying Martians are. Um, Superboy, they had a couple of guest appearances by like Zatanna as a 17 year old. Dr. Fate ends up in an mm. episode. They do a lot of good stuff. And um, they kind of send. Um, and, and, and let me guess, Bruce, Bruce sets it all up, right? Um, the entire league does. Oh, because I was going to say this very much sounds like, yeah, it's kind of a kind of a weird thing that you all wound up being put in a situation where you would be disenfranchised and form your own team. I didn't see that coming. Well, no, that was one Six of the things ago. they did was Robin mm-hmm. Kaldor, who is awesome. He's the best Atlantean character created in the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Wally just went on this mission. Like, Robin hacked the Justice League computers. Why? Because they're based on the bad computers, and it's not like he don't know them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so you've got Dick Grayson, Wally West, and Caldor going. There's something over here, and the Justice League just left the planet. I'm gonna go fix it, you know. And the mm-hmm. Justice League might go, "No, don't do it. You're kids." But they're like, "We're not talking to Justice League. Forget them. I'm gonna do my own thing," you know. And it actually had really good storytelling mm-hmm. and a great team and story arcs that actually had consequences. And then move over to season two, and season two did something amazing. Season two happens three years after season one. Oh, so there's actually a time jump. Yeah. Okay. What happened in that two years? We never find out. They just allude to things. And um, and at this point... Could be a movie later on. No. No? They no. just never... They, they allude to some of the stuff that happened. In other words, life happened. Now, let's look at the next important part in this team. They've got a few other stuff. Robin has become Nightwing. <laughs> um, um, the Kid Flash has quit. Along with um, along with Tigris, who I immediately thought was Arrowette, but new members of the team have come. Red Tornado was like the new mentor. Whole um, Superboy and, and Ms. Martian broke up because he got he found out that she uses her telepathy in a very not cool way. You know, <laughs> not seriously. Yeah. Every time that somebody gets mad at what she did, she freaking finds out and wipes their mind. Oh, I want you to like me, so I'll just erase everything that you don't like about me from your memory. And he's like, do you, do you understand not- how wrong that is? <laughs> you always say this. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean I always say this? Kind of, yeah. Did you flashy thing me? <laughs> how many times have you flashy thing me? And Superboy was like, with as intimate as we got, do you not think I wouldn't recognize your the touch of your mind on mine? What you did was uncool. I ain't talking to you about that. We're done. Because Superboy's got anger issues, and part of the anger issues is the fact that he's a clone of Superman with Lex DNA. 
He's got two daddies, no mommies, and he was born in a vet. And Superman is awkward around him. So he's like, okay, you're Superman. I got so much I want to talk to. And Superman's like, what's that? Train, train crash in Bangladesh? Up, up, and away. And Batman's like, you know you're being a dick. He's like, what am I supposed to do? I, I don't know this guy. He's looking at me like look, a dad. I don't look, know how to look, be dad. I know you and Lex <laughs> had a drunken night, and I was the result. Wait, yeah. he's mixed of Superman and Lex's DNA. Uh-huh. Yeah. Lex, I thought you hated Superman, but you wanted to F Superman. Oh, God. Yeah, and we actually get to watch as um, as Superboy goes through exactly that mindset over the course of season two. Yeah. And he deals with, like, drug issues, and they do some stuff with Apocalypse. It was a great cartoon. And then, canceled canceled you know why why no toys no toys it lost everything to merchandising rights nobody was buying the toys because mostly girls were watching the show and so they pulled it from cartoon network and people were pissed they were so mad including myself <laughs> you know including myself i was mad because i'm like this is good writing this, as a matter of fact, is everything I talk about DC is, especially when Marvel people are like, Bleh! you know, and I'm like, no, dude, DC tells good stories, too. These are great characters. Take a look at Young Justice. Yeah. Take a look at the Justice League cartoon. Take a look at this. And um, and then they canceled it because nobody was buying toys. They were selling the wrong toys. No, yeah. no, it's not that they were. Uh, again, mostly girls watched it and girls like young girls don't bug their family in such an aggressive way to go get stuff you know also or more to the point they were marketing it to boys but only girls were watching it so girls are like i don't like doing it <laughs> well yeah more importantly it's like oh well, our, our our daughter likes the show but i'm not gonna buy her the batman action figure yeah exactly but if they made a my little my little barbie wonder woman set they would have been all over that oh yeah <laughs> and my um, little barbie uh 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 um my you, my you little scoot over a little bit to your right. Yeah, sorry, my my little pony, uh, my little pony water ponies, Atlantean water pony. They would have been all over that. Yeah. Oh, check it out. Uh, impossible pros are like, dude. Clark only sleeps with people with the LL in their initials. Obvious plan, you know. And he's right. Lois Lane, <laughs> Lana Lang, Lex Luthor. Anyway, <laughs> um, and Vixen's like, yeah, you know what? They have that, and they do. They're actually called superhero girls, but they didn't make them for Young Justice. So a couple of years later, DC starts its own streaming service. They need content. <laughs> um, well, not just that. They have the content because they've got Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated yeah. Series, all of the movies they got, and not to mention they're owned by Warner Brothers. <laughs> you know? Yep. So they've got the content, but they're like, well, since network TV won't give us the shot because of the whole toy thing, screw it. Our fans have spoken, and I'm betting dollars to donuts that if we run Young Justice on this... People will buy our streaming service. Did it work? Oh my God, did it work? So many people are like, yeah. even Stickman is like, I got the DC streaming service, but I'm really just watching, let me guess, Young Justice? Okay, yeah. I mean, it's, it's that good. Yeah, so, I remember saying it was Young Justice and the old Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. Which, really, which, by the way, plays really weird when watched through modern eyes. There will, you will say nothing bad about Linda Carter, but, um, but not to mention, you know, everything on the CW will now be showing up on the DC streaming service as well. So they got content. It was a smart move. Um, so that is where we bring us to now. Um, now season three has started. Hooray! We got our season three of a show that was canceled. I feel like a tick fan and suck at Firefly fans. Anyway, um, I was um, fighting words. Hmm? It was fighting words. Hey, I liked Firefly as much as the next guy. But here was the thing. They did something a little more daring with this. And we'll get into this in a minute. But, yeah. So what we have with this is... Let me just... Yeah, this is no time for you to resign. I'm not resigning. Just taking a leave of absence. Besides, if you need help, Barbara's more than ready to step up. Agreed. What? Barbara Gordon in the bad girl costume? When did that happen? Who cares? It's been a few years since season two. <laughs> That's kind of like <laughs> their thing. And of course, um, we got our dude here, Kaldor. That is Aqualad, who has super duper leadership skills because he was trained by a king. 
Mm-hmm. Hydrokinesis, a whole bunch of fighting skills, and in, and in season two we found out that he was the son of Black Manta, the freaking international pirate. <laughs> so this dude is amazing. He's got all these different skills. Um, his hydrokinesis, he trained at the Atlantean Magic School. So those two things on his back are freaking handles that he makes hydro swords out of. But he can do with water what the Green Lantern does with light. Mm-hmm. And he's a nice guy. <laughs> okay then. So yeah, let's but take Dave, a I need a break, Calder. You, me, Wally, we we founded this team. Without him. I understand. This team has had successes, but much remains to be done. Superboy, Miss Martian, Beast Boy, your Alpha. Baaz or Um has called from Mars. He needs help. Tigress, Kid Flash, Bumblebee, Guardian, your beta. LexCorp is bringing out the Reach soft drink under a new name. We need proof. Business as usual. And that's exactly what it was. Business as usual. It's like, guess what? We are back. <laughs> and um, and so the next part happens like two years later. Now, what we find out in this is that the Flash, Wally West, is dead. And Dick is going... Now, what a lot of people don't know, except for the hardcore DC Comics fans is there's a lot of friendship dynamics that goes on in comics that they never really show in the movies because you can't quite cross-pollinate. Yeah. Example, um, with the Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. everybody knows that Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm are like brothers, mm-hmm. and they screw around like brothers. But what a lot of people don't know is that Johnny Storm's best friend is Peter Parker. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, Peter Parker or Spider-Man? Spider-Man. No, Peter. So, like they know, I mean, they, they, they know, know the identity because he tried joining the Fantastic Four on his first week as a superhero. <laughs> um, but yeah, those two, they again, the big show off guy that flies all around and the smart aleck dude that web swings and talks crap to everybody. Mm-hmm. But they both happen to be two really good guys. Um, and what a lot of people like the hardcore DC Comics fans knows is that Wally West and Dick Grayson are best friends. So Dick is having to deal with the fact that he lost his best friend. Yeah. You know, and they're best friends because they've both been heroes since they were kids. They're both, like, right under the founding members of the Justice League. They're both relatively normal people. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. Like, Nightwing doesn't get enough credit because he was raised by Batman. Batman. He's almost as good at everything as Bruce Wayne is. Yeah. But he's still a nice person. Unless you watch the Titans TV show, which I'll only cover if y'all make me. I'll put up um I'll put up a poll on Patreon. But um yeah, I mean he but all in all, Dick Grayson is a good dude. He's mm-hmm. a really good guy that you actually would want to hang out with. And Barry Allen is a good dude. But he's a little boring. Wally is just as good, just as smart, but he's a little more fun. He laughs a lot more. He, mm-hmm. you know, um, when he's courting his wife, he's like, hey, honey, where do you want um, dinner? She's like, I'm thinking Italian. He picks her up and they run to Tuscany. That's the kind of dude he is, <laughs> you know. And Because um, yeah. you can. Yeah. I mean, if you can run across the ocean and you can run Mach 5 and carry your woman, you know, and, carry yeah. your significant other. And not have her be uh, the air friction turn her into dust. Yeah. <laughs> then then you do it. That's yeah. what you do. And honestly, I'm, I'm 100% there. Um, so, yeah, it turns out um, Grayson lost his, um, lost his best friend. So um, this story arc, we end up with a couple of things. But when I say that this thing got dark, the story arc is simple. It opens up with metahuman children have been getting kidnapped around the world for some reason. Ugh. So they're they're going straight into child abduction. And it shows um one person um at the hospital pretty much saying like, Oh my god, and the doctor comes out and it's like, I'm sorry, but your sister's heart gave on them before their before the transplant got there. I'm so sorry, and your sister's dead, and sure enough um, the dude is like, no, my sister is dead. All my friends are dead. <laughs> you know, and then she wakes up and she gets put in this vat and turned into a damn monster. And I'm like, hold up. Like, hold up. Like, what am I watching here? 
Um, yeah, the little girl wakes up in the hospital bed, um, and she gets put into a vat. They say initiate tar protocol. She gets covered in tar and comes out, um, a freaking monster. They're like, ah, Metagene has been activated. So, yeah, and again, she comes out, and then we see... So sure enough, they're fighting, all, and Adam Strange is like, I did, I wasn't expecting Adam Strange. He's a deep cut from DC. Yeah. Essentially, he's Buck Rogers, except every six months he gets pulled through Zeta tube, Zeta beam technology. He came across this a scientist was working on teleportation technology, and it zapped him and accidentally took him all the way across the universe. So he had to pull like a John Carter of Mars kind of buck rogers sci-fi thing mm -hmm. but then every few months the zeta particle energy dissipates and he re-teleports here on earth but he likes it better there and he's married there and has kids there and he's their world's champion but sometimes he's just gotta go <laughs> <laughs> okay randomly oh, 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 no randomly call back to earth yeah, yeah yeah and it's not like a government or anything called it's just 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 that's it's physics yeah and it gets it gets heart wrenching because sometimes he's gone for like six or seven months, sometimes up to a year rand time. And then he uh, does he teleport back again randomly? Or yes. Is it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He teleports back afterwards. Oh, okay. But it's it's very fluctuating back and forth. <clears throat> and you hoping know, that that last leap will take him the leap home. home. But he doesn't have. Oh boy. He doesn't have an owl. Um. <clears throat> but what we end up having on this is um is i don't know how i feel about it actually i kind of do because this season is based on the outsiders mm -hmm. and the outsiders are essentially the dc team of we're sort of street level like we could be justice league level but we need to take care of the street and we don't like living under the rules of the trinity and of course they were started by batman so they're batman's team that looks out for the little guy while the justice league is saving the universe Somebody's got to save New York. <clears throat> um, again, most of our friends who would read comic well, books, they like sense. the outsiders. It makes sense. Bruce understands the necessity, necessity for franchising. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's why there's a damn <laughs> Batman Incorporated. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, they're fighting the parademons and they have a new lava monster. And we know this as the audience, but then this happens. <laughs> Exactly, like, what the, huh? What just happened? And again, just to add insult to injury or plot to the season. Just happened. I don't hear a heartbeat. No, 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 that wasn't enough juice to kill anything. I cannot be dead. She, it is a she, or was. Scans indicate heart failure, and I'm reading a female, approximate age, 14 Earth years. Earth years? Yes. I'm sorry, but this is a human girl, a, a child, from Earth. Well, she was in the hospital because <laughs> she had a heart condition. Now, what, what makes me mad about this is that, for those of you guys that have been watching this show from the beginning, that was Black Lightning. Like, Principal Jefferson Pierce with two daughters. <laughs> just killed a 14 year old girl <laughs> and i'm just kind of going if they're gonna make any character kill a kid why him 
Yeah, that's what? not gonna go over well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's, I'm like, oh, he's, oh. he's he's not gonna he yeah. Oh, make no mistake. From then on, he quit. He's like, nope, no more superheroing. I'm out. I'm done. And um, it actually showed a little something about his wife, which I forgot as we were reviewing the show, mm -hmm. which was Lynn, maiden name Stewart. She's John Stewart's sister. Okay. Um, which is interesting because I'm I'm wondering if that means John Stewart is actually going to be on the Black Lightning show, um, season three. You Could know? be, yeah, that makes sense. That's it's a yeah. it's a possibility. Yeah. It's a possibility. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's what we get before the first commercial break, yo. Um, and essentially, they open up with that, and they give us the plot line of um, there is a child trafficking ring. There, they are. Um, they're kidnapping kids from all over the world, and they're disappearing. So somebody's doing child trafficking. Now this is five years after the, um, or two years after the scene that we watch, um, that we watch um, Dick Grayson or Nightwing retire and Caldor take over yeah. Young Justice, right? So of course after that we get, um, we get a scene of of Hall of Justice. Moved. Now, Distant from the people, the League happens. was created as the next exploitable. And that is. Huge. So she is leading on our various missions in space. All right, we have confirmation. Now there's uh, there's something I got to point out there. If you look at what Keldor is wearing, it says when they teleport in, because in this show they have teleport technology, and every time, and this is very clever, um, every time somebody teleports, it says their name and their designation number of their team, which is based on what member of the team they are. So with Young Justice, it's Dick Grayson, known as Nightwing, um, G, or sorry, A-0-1, Wally West, A-0-2, Keldor Ray, um, A-0-3. <clears throat> um, and he's on, he's on the Justice League now, and he's Aquaman. Where's Arthur? Yeah. We don't know. Well, <laughs> we well, don't know. They don't well, tell us. Yeah. I'm assuming <laughs> Arthur's probably now king of Atlanta, doing kinging things back on Atlantis, probably. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. You don't know. get closure on that. Huh? You don't get closure on that. Well, Stuff happens. We might get closure on that, but they don't say outright when we're going to get it. Yeah. Um, The way that this show is written, eventually we'll get to Atlantis in a future episode, and we'll either see Arthur or we won't. Mm -hmm. But right now, Kaldor's Aquaman. And it's Aquaman. Shut up. Now, um, now this scene is very interesting because they talk about stuff, and a thing happens. Metahuman trafficking on Earth has spilled out into the galaxy. On multiple worlds, Earth's metahumans are being deployed by the enemy as weapons of mass destruction. Among other things, their presence in space is undermining our efforts to rebuild both Earth and the League's reputations after our trial on the planet Brimbor. Right. That's the problem. I'm sorry, Jeff. I, I didn't mean to diminish the life of that girl. I know, Diana. Forget I said anything. It's just... It's just... We need to know how this happened and how it got by us. Here on Earth, our ongoing yeah. struggle... Now see, if you notice, Black Lightning right there mm -hmm. ain't wearing his costume. Nope. They're sitting around the Justice League table, and they ain't wearing the costume. Now, interesting thing that comes out in this plot line is the Secretary of Defense is Lex Luthor. Ugh. And he's been working with the with the UN to essentially put up sanctions left, right, and sideways crippling the Justice League. It, it's essentially the writers over here are going through the plot of Marvel's Civil War. And they're doing it very well. Um, let's uh, take another look here. Behind the scenes to turn other nations against us. He's hamstrung us. I mean, come on! When that tsunami hit Malaysia, we couldn't even go in on a humanitarian mission. We've become removed, distant from the people the League was created to serve. Not by choice. Perhaps it's time to acknowledge that the League has outlived its usefulness on Earth. That. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, it, it's Lex, the criminal mastermind, said, you know what, I'll just go for Secretary of Defense, work together with the UN, and cripple what superheroes can do. Mwaha, mwaha ha ha ha. And essentially, yeah, he made the Zakovian Accords and they stuck. 
And if you notice the green arrow, which that is my arrow, by the way, like he's hamstrung us. We couldn't even go in on a humanitarian help. I hate corporate fat cats. Aren't you a billionaire? Shut up. I hate the people I work with. But you work with the Justice League. Exactly. You know, that that's my green arrow. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so again, a thing happens. That's overstating things, don't you think? No, I don't. And I'm offering an alternative. If your alternative is to disband the League, I think you are forgetting all of the good we do. Did. Past tense. Present tense. The League has its difficulties. I acknowledge that. But we still have a positive impact, and we are an important symbol for truth and justice worldwide. Calder, symbols are great, but... But all that matters is the mission. And if the UN's a roadblock to that mission, then we remove it by removing the League. Bruce, please... You are a founding member. I'm sorry, but I hereby tender my resignation to the Justice League. Dude, Batman is a jerk. <laughs> he is such a jerk. <laughs> It was just like, man, why are you even talking? You already made up your mind. Yeah. You know, and I hate when people do that. I do. And, you know, we got Black Lightning over there going, wait a minute, but see, I'm not wearing my uniform. I came here to quit. Why is Batman upstaging me? Damn it, Batman. You know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and again, like, let, let's get back to doing this thing here. So do I. Ollie. Whoa! Whoa! And Flash is like, uh, This was a plan. You, Batman, and the others. You arranged this in advance. You should leave with us, Dinah. We can do a lot of good this way. Well, you're off to a fine start. You knew I wouldn't be part of Blindside Encounter, so you kept me out of the loop. I... If you're leaving, leave. Now, this is important because she's like, you know, you know I wouldn't be part of Brian Sight and Caldor. Black Canary has been training the Young, the young Justice team since season one. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't tell you guys out there was that at this point in the cartoon, Caldor is the leader of the Justice League. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, guess what? The sidekick rose to the ranks, became the new Aquaman. Now he's the leader of the Justice League. And, of course, Batman talks about disbanding it. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so yeah, um, but all in all, um, again, as you can see by the way that I'm talking about this, yeah, it's it's a serious thing. So far, the first episode is going through some really good stuff. Um, and again, they had Shazam in there. Um, we find out that um, that Ms. Martian and um, Superboy are living together. So it's like, hey, they got back together. What's up with this? What they never fought? Hmm? Oh no 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 no! After during season two, yeah. it was very clear. Like you're not doing this again. This is a bad thing to do. And she actually learned that lesson. But it was very much the I'm glad you learned that lesson. We're still dumped. We're no no. no. And now they're back together. And one of the one of the fun parts about Young Justice is finding out what happened in those years. Like okay, you're watching the show, and then don't leave us hanging with that. Okay. It's kind of like it's just revealed slowly. Over the course of the over the course of the entire season, um, and it was again brilliant. If you guys haven't had a chance to watch seasons one and two, do it, do it. It's so good. Oh, um, and over the course of this episode, Grayson has been tracking down the the traffickers because that's what he does. Um, so you get that Young Justice kind of. With the kid team, what's the drama over here? With the Justice League, what's the drama over here? But then you've got Dick Grayson actually taking care of the damn case. And he's like, I've tracked down a few things, but I have to I have to form another team. Well, no, nah, it's just, it's a one-time mission. So he ends up going to, um, to a few people, um, one of which being Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> he's like, okay. Now, Jefferson says goodnight to his kids and then goes to the wife saying, look, I'm out. I'm not doing this superhero thing anymore. I just, I, I can't do it. Because again, he killed a kid. Or he thinks he killed a kid. That's the same age as his daughters. Yeah. So he's like, I'm yeah. out. Yeah, he's done. He, <laughs> you know? he needs a break. Yeah, the school principal, the politician, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and she's like, yeah, right. He's like, what do you mean? I'm the ex-wife of Black Lightning and the sister of a Green Lantern. 
I've heard I'm out of the game a whole bunch of times, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, so sure enough, um, you know, we get to a fun scene that happens here. I hear met a human trafficking syndicate that we can take down in one night. When it's all over, we go our separate ways. I can't. I know what happened on Rand, Jeff, but we can make sure something like that never happens again. You're not hearing me. I'm not saying I won't, I'm saying I can't. My powers, they're not working. I'm useless, broken. I came for the man, not the powers. You're still a hero, and I still need you on this. Midnight at the Centennial Park Zeta Tube. We'll wait five minutes. I won't be there. I heard that. <laughs> doesn't sound promising. No, it doesn't. And we're running out of time. Now that voice in his ear is Oracle. Yeah. Good old Barbara Gordon. Mm -hmm. Which means the killing joke is canon in this too. Uh, so yeah, she's in a wheelchair. And she's doing the she's doing that whole thing. And of course, um, so yeah, they put everything together and they're going for this. And that's the episode, essentially. And this one, now I had to question, like, what, how good is this episode? Or am I just jazzed that this show is back on? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And looking at it, because I had to watch it a couple of times, I'm like, you know what? Yeah. This is actually really well put together because, again, the animation is as good as it used to be. But more to the point, I want to watch the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch the next one because, um, um, yeah, this is like, I'm looking at this whole thing and I'm going, all right, we're getting homages to the deep cuts, mm -hmm. but we're getting a little bit of dark storytelling because people are dying. <laughs> um, Impossible Pros is like, have they shown her and her jail? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. It's only episode one. But it's like, he says Oracle in the episode and I'm like, what that and no, no. One of the big things is if you hear Barbara, Barbara Gordon, and she's known as Oracle. She's in the chair. If she's not in the chair, but she is or she's not Oracle. If she's Batgirl, um, nobody at DC would screw with that because that was yeah. You know that that's one it's of the a big, big deals. Deal. That's a really really big deal. Um, that's kind of like making it so that um, Magneto, you know, that Magneto was actually pro um, living in harmony with humans the whole time. It's just no, you you, yeah. you can't pull that. You know, or saying that Professor X could walk the whole time. He was just faking it to get more sympathy from the X-Men. That's not the way that works. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Um, but all in all, so far, I, I had to give this show a solid full house. And mm -hmm. I mean, like, Aces Over Kings. You know, Aces Over Kings. Because um, it's, hey, look, we're back. But we're not doing fan service. We're not saying, hey, guys, you remember this? Hey guys, you remember that? No, no, it, it, it's just jump straight into the it's, straight into story. Good writing, good story. Yeah, and this not is a the, lot of not yeah. a lot of recap and not a lot of nostalgia. Waffle, no waffle, waffle, waffle. Not at all. It's y'all know why you here. So let's talk about this child abduction. Let's hang on. And it's like, you know, and we don't think we're serious. We just killed a teenage girl. Moving on. Matter of fact, the the hero that happens to be a role model on one of our other channels did it. Yeah, we just had a school principal who was like, whose life is this? My life, and how am I going to live it? By any means necessary, just kill the kid. How serious are we? Tune in next week, you know? <laughs> so um, so that's what we're doing. But I do have to end it because we have been at this for two hours now. Yeah. Um, so we'll go into episode two next week. <laughs> um, and yeah, I know, uh, we've waited a long time for Young Justice. And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 they got. And again, they, they showed like Plastic Man and stuff like that. But all in all, this show isn't pulling anything, although it's doing one thing that's interesting. Um, and we find out in the next episode, which is it gives us a problem with Changeling and Beast Boy. Hmm. And we'll talk about that next week. But I want to thank you for showing up this week. Mm -hmm. You know, um, anything? Happy to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's good to have you back, man. Good to have you back. Um, and of course, you know, I got to say, I got to give my loves, all of my love, all of <laughs> my love to the deck mob. <laughs> 
all of my love to the deck mob, all of my love. And of course, thank you for showing up. If you're watching and you're not in the chat, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. We love having anybody here show up so we can talk about all of our nerd stuff because that is how we roll. Actually, how we roll is a different show. Um, <laughs> And um, but one of the things that we have to say on all that stuff is, you know, if you guys want to know or have any questions, you know, um, um, well, if you guys really want to watch a whole lot of the other stuff, then head over to our head over to our archive. But if you guys like what you see and you want to talk to us, then feel free to hit us up at deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com um check out the archive on youtube we have a lot of the old episodes where we talk about black lightning and and the other stuff of daredevil um hit us up on twitter check out our poll start a conversation what do you think of young justice and all that stuff just follow us at back in the deck or you can join our facebook group that's deckers on the book and hit up with uh, some of those pictures, fan art, all that other stuff that you guys want to do. Like, I really like Young Justice. This is my ship picture of Caldor along with Grayson because I think they would make great swimming acrobatic babies. Um, that is where to put them, or you can always send it through the email. Now, if you're a lot like us and you spend all day in traffic, then you shouldn't be watching this show. You should be listening to it on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P. And you know what? If you do the SoundCloud thing, you can even download it and listen to it at your leisure. I listen to podcasts when I'm in the shower. Not because I'm weird, but because they last a long time and I don't have to worry about a song coming on that I hate. And um, you can totally do that and download our stuff in MP3 form. You can do that for free for you forever from us. And of course, follow our Instagram at Back in the Deck um, on the Instagram. Now, I do want to say, we I know we have a lot of things up there. And another site that I talk to a lot is like, oh, man, people are doing all these commercials. Like, half of the shit was commercials. And you know what? Sorry to tell you, we got to keep the lights on. Now, if you guys want to help us keep the lights on without as many commercials, then feel free to head over to our, <coughs> to our GoFundMe and throw us a few bucks here or there. But if you really want to give us the help and you want to help us in a serious, personal way to help us keep the lights on... I would really appreciate it. The henchmen would appreciate it, and everybody that I'm not throwing paychecks to would eventually like paychecks. You can head over to the Patreon. That's back at patreon.com slash bid underscore p. And, of course, we have tiers for as little as a dollar a month. Just a dollar. A dollar a month. You get access to all of the streams, and you get a few other things. Um, Honestly... If it wasn't already my tier, I would probably join the $20 tier, which is the, oh, we're friends now. And that means you get to be, uh, anybody who does that gets um, a once a month, one hour conversation with me or one of the co-hosts on Skype or Facebook Messenger or whatever, where you can tell us how stupid we actually are. But um, there's a whole lot of other stuff. I'm waiting for somebody to join the $50 tier so I can write a song, so that'll be awesome. But either way, anything that you guys can do would really help. Um, unless you're a kid, unless you're a kid, because um, you know I don't want you stealing money from your parents and all that stuff. I don't. If you don't have it, don't give it. Don't hurt yourself in order to help us out. That's not cool, and that's not what we would ask. But if you can't help us out, that would be cool. But in the meantime, like I said, if you don't like what I just said, send me an email at backinthedeck at gmail.com. But with all that, we're gonna get out of here because we're starting to get tired. And remember, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like or have the hobbies you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender, identity, sexual preference, your disability, or your budget, you tell them to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, along with... License to Hedge. And Night, everybody. And we will talk to you guys next week on Buster Recap. Night, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.